Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing another video in my end of the year wrap up series and I'm going to be sharing all of the best high end makeup that came out in 2020. So I've been keeping these kind of split up between categories. I've already posted a worst makeup of 2020. I also shared my 10 best purchases of the year and those are products that I purchased myself that all came out before 2020 that I finally just picked up that I thought were really fantastic and i also shared my drugstore favorites so i've kind of been keeping all these favorites separated but today we're going to be talking high-end makeup i would say this is like high-end slash mid-range we've got some products that are kind of on the more affordable end of high-end so i'm excited to share these with you guys also fun fact i just got done filming another video but i switched up my outfit my hair and my jewelry just to keep you on your toes a bit so if you're like that makeup look seems familiar that's because it is. All right, so I wanted to keep these two my true favorites. So I'm not including a product in every single category. If I did not have a product in a certain category, I did not want to force it. Also, everything in this video except for one product released in 2020. One came out in 2019, so I kind of squeezed it in, but I do like to keep these exclusive to what came out during the year, so it's like the best of the year. So with that, I did not have a high-end primer or even a drugstore primer that I thought was the best of the year that I shared, but my favorite high-end foundation release of 2020 came from Bite Beauty. So this is the Changemaker Foundation. This formula, mwah! It's fantastic. So they describe it as a medium coverage with a natural finish, and I would say that fits it quite well. I do think that you can kind of customize this. You can build it up to be somewhat more full coverage. I don't think it builds the best though because it is a semi-thick formula. I don't like to do too many layers of it, but I also think it's very easy to sheer out and wear as more of a light coverage option or like really sheared out with some primer. You could make it sheer coverage. The texture and finish of this does a really good job mimicking natural skin. I don't think that it looks too dewy because sometimes that can just look very artificial like makeup on the skin but it's also not too matte it's a very satin finish fantastic wear time out of this as well it looks really great at the end of the day and it does fade a little bit but i don't think that it fades uneven which is my problem with certain foundations that don't last as well if it's going to start looking patchy and break up by the end of the day that's not going to work for me if it just fades gracefully we can make that work and i think this one lasts really well and then when it does fade it goes gracefully. You know what I'm thinking though? As I'm describing it, I have not tried the new e.l.f. CC cream yet, and I almost feel like maybe it would be a dupe for this. I feel like e.l.f. was trying to make it similar to the IT Cosmetics CC cream, but I even feel like that is kind of similar to this as well, where you get a little bit more coverage than a typical like tinted moisturizer, but it also just looks really natural and skin-like and it is more on the lightweight side. Okay, we're doing two bite products back to back, but I'm kind of trying to keep this in order of the face. And you guys know I had to mention this. Oh, also I did want to mention, like I said, I did have the top 10 purchases of 2020 go up and I mentioned another foundation that I'm obsessed with in that video. So if you're thinking, wait, why didn't she mention that? It's in the other video. Can you hear my dog snoring right now? I get comments all the time like, is someone snoring in the background? And yes, but it's not a human like you think it is. It is a 20 pound dog making those very loud noises. So the change maker powder. What can I say about this that I have not already? I've talked about this in a ton of videos. It's a really beautiful lightweight setting powder. It's not gonna make the skin look too matte or powdery, but I do feel like it really preserves the wear of my makeup. I swear when I wear this, my makeup looks so much better at the end of the day. I feel like it locks it in without being too heavy. It's more lightweight. It's kind of blurring if you dust it over and use it as a finishing powder. I do think if you have oily skin and you really wanna lock it in, this might not be as heavy duty as you're looking for. You might look for something a little bit more powdery but this i like that it doesn't look too heavy i feel like it locks everything down without taking away the finish of the foundation you know i think it's a great option if you have dry skin and you find that a lot of powders just look too heavy this one doesn't i have two blushes to mention i feel like 2020 was the year of blush i started saying that back in january that i was expecting to see a ton of blush releases and it, they didn't let us down this year i love blush i feel like it's really been revived within the past few years and there's a lot of new formulas on the market so my standout blushes i have 
uh, some individual blushes and then I have a blush palette to mention. You guys can just say it with me, the Persona Cosmetics blushes. So this is their super blush formula. So these are the two original shades that they came out with, but they just introduced a third shade in this line, which is called Terracotta and it's designed for a medium to deep skin tone. And it's such a beautiful terracotta color. Like how else can I describe it? But this is Georgia, this is Carmel. It's interesting, in the beginning, Carmel was my most used shade, but these days, Georgia is becoming my most used shade. So these are on the more pigmented side, which I don't always love for a blush, because sometimes I feel like I can go a little bit overboard, but I do think these are really easy to work with, very easy to buff into the skin, and they have this kind of hybrid finish to them. They're not shiny because I don't like a really glowy blush. It's not for me. The irony of me saying that is the other blush I'm going to share is really glowy, but that one works better than most. But it's also not completely flat, matte, powdery. It sits somewhere in the middle, so it kind of alivens the skin without looking like there's a heavy layer of powder product there, but it doesn't emphasize texture either. So it just looks very smooth on the cheeks, but still awake, long wearing. The packaging is adorable. And the price tag of this, I think, is so reasonable for a high-end blush. The other one also doesn't have a mirror inside, and I like that a lot of brands are moving to that because it makes products easier to be recycled if you, do, if you are able to use them up. But this is the blush palette. Holy moly, I am obsessed with this. I don't like to use that word loosely, but every time I wear this, I turn into just the most vain person ever. Every mirror I walk by, I'm like, look at my cheek, and I'm doing this because it has this like beautiful reflection to it. This is from the Balm. This is the Will Powder Palette. I don't know why people don't talk about this. This knocked my socks off. So this is a four pan blush palette. The shade that I'm obsessed with is this one right here. The whole palette is nice, don't get me wrong, but if this was an individual, that would be even better. This is the shade Dedication. It's almost like a subtle dual chrome blush, which sounds like it would not be something I would like, especially for every day, but it's so beautiful, you guys. It's a sheeny blush, which I said I don't always like, but something about this just looks so healthy on the skin. It's not one of those where you look up close and you're like, oh, you have glitter particles and your, your cheek looks textured. No, this one just looks like your skin is really healthy and radiant and it just, oh, it glows every single time I wear it. I'm obsessed with the way that my blush looks. The highlight in this palette for my skin tone, it's a little bit deep and it doesn't look like it would be in the pan, but on the cheeks, it's kind of one of those that from the side looks nice and then from the front, I have a little bit of a stripe. So I use this more so as like an eyeshadow or an inner corner highlight. And then these two are that same like shimmery formula that I was raving about. This is a peach one that I do also love, but this shade just calls to me more. And then this is a matte blush. I don't use this one as much, just because every time I'm reaching into it, it's usually in one of these, but I do think this is a really great matte blush as well. This packaging is really cool also. They designed it to be fully recyclable, so there's actually not a magnet here the way there is on most makeup products. I was gonna say palettes, but most makeup products. But So you just unlatch it with the hook. It's fully cardboard, I mean, except for the pans, obviously. And then when you're done, you can pop the pans out and recycle everything. Okay, a highlight. This is the one that didn't come out this year, but it came out, you know, 2019, I think near the end of the year. So I'm going to squeeze it in because I also think they came out with new shades this year. So technically we're gonna include it. So my highlighter preferences are changing. I've been mentioning that, what's going on with my hair? I've been mentioning that in a ton of videos that I just don't like the blinding highlight that I used to like. These days, even like not even that blinding highlights, I look at them and I'm like, mm, it's too much. I love it for filming, but in person, I just, it's not what I'm into these days. I do feel like things go in waves though, so give me a year. Maybe in my 2021 favorites, I'll be like, yes, give me the most blinding highlight. Who knows? However, this one from Nabla gives me that healthy skin, not a ton of makeup effect that I'm going for. So this is their skin glazing formula. They have a lot of products under this line. They've got blushes, bronzers, and highlights. They're all kind of like a subtle glowy product like this. The shade that I am in love with is Privilege. This is the highlight I'm wearing today. It's kind of got that pinky undertone that I love in a highlight. This is a great option if you have texture on your cheeks and you don't want to amplify it. Amplify it? Amplify it? too much you want to have a little bit of a glow without emphasizing it maybe that's the word i was going for 
this makes you look like you just have healthy skin and not a ton of products sitting there. So this is one that looks really beautiful up close. You know, there are some highlighters that look great on camera or from a distance. This is one you could be standing right next to me and it looks just as beautiful and very healthy and very natural. I can't say enough. So I'm saving the palettes for a ranking video. I considered doing just a top five palettes of the year video, but I asked you guys what you would prefer to see and the winner of the poll was a ranking video. So that's gonna be coming soon. So I'm not including palettes in this video, but I do have one eye product that was a big standout for me this year. And that is the Lash Freak from Urban Decay. Okay, this is a mascara. You're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it, and I don't think there's anything in between. If you like the most volume at all cost, you don't mind if it's just like a touch clumpy. I don't like major clumps, but you don't mind if it looks maybe a little bit artificial. You'll be able to tell you're wearing mascara, but I've never found anything that makes my lashes longer, thicker, fuller. This is the most intense result you will find with a mascara. I'm constantly asked if I'm wearing fake eyelashes when I wear this. It is the best of the best. But with that, there's a bit of a trade-off. It can get clumpy. I feel like there's a learning curve. The first time I used it, I immediately wrote it off. I'm like, no, I hate this. It looks so heavy. But if you can be patient and kind of comb through it, I mean, your lashes will not look better. So. I, like I said, I don't think it's for everyone, but if you are like me and you want your mascara to do the most, this does the most. Okay, a fragrance favorite. I don't always mention a ton of fragrances, but this was a high-end fragrance that I wore a ton this year. This is from Skylar. So I was able to partner with them earlier this year when this launched, but this is not sponsored. I'm under no obligation to talk about it, but I really love this perfume. The scent is called Sun Shower. Let me look up the notes because describing perfumes is tricky okay the notes lemon leaves jasmine tea meadow greens it's it's this very light citrusy summer scent i sprayed it today when it's like the middle of winter and it's so gloomy and we haven't seen the sun in days and i'm just like ah let me get into the summer vibes very light very clean very airy so if you're into that type of scent i think you would really like this this brand is leaping bunny certified which is really hard to find with fragrances it's so tricky to find cruelty free ones especially ones that are accessible and this brand is sold at sephora i think they had a sampler set i'll try to link it down below if they still have it just because perfume can be so personal i don't know that everything's gonna work for everyone so i think a sample set is a nice place to start and decide which fragrance best suits you all right, those are my favorite high-end makeup products that released in 2020. I will have that palette ranking coming very shortly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your favorites of the year down below, and I'll go ahead and see you in my next one.